In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build an extension in under five minutes. Let's get started. So I have a basic manifest right here, and we're just going to give it a name. I'm calling this one Old Timer because the we're going to do is give web pages an old timey sepia effect. Um, and you can see we also are uh, setting up a browser action and some content scripts. We're going to need the storage permission. So we're going to request the storage permission so we can keep track of the current level of the old timey effect that we're applying to our page. With that, we can make our pop-up. So we have a basic HTML here for the pop-up and we're going to need a label for our uh, control. We're gonna use a range to control how old timey our effect is. Um, so we're gonna have an input in there and a label. Uh, the input uh, will go from zero to 100 because the CSS filter we're using uh, ranges from zero to 100% for the effect. Uh, we're going to need some styling just to make this look good. Not a ton, but you know, just put some margins between our text and our control and put a little padding around our uh, control and the edge of our pop-up. So I'm just going to add some uh, margins here and a little bit of padding. Um, of course, our pop-up won't do anything unless we have some JavaScript to respond to the changes in our input. So I'm going to add a script. And next, we're going to uh, configure our pop-ups script. Uh, we're going to get a reference to our input. Um, so we're just going to grab that off the page. Um, there's only one input, so we can just grab the input. And so when the input changes, we're going to need to update uh, the storage to save uh, how much of the effect we're applying uh, at this given moment. So we're listening for the change event, and we're going to call a function called set value uh, and pass the value of the input. Now we have to write set value. We're making it an async function because it's going to uh, be easier to work with the promise API with the uh, that's used by extensions. Um, and we're going to use the browser storage API. We requested the storage permission and we're going to locally store a value. Um, and so you can set that value by passing an object. Uh, now we actually want to set everything up because we want to fetch the stored value uh, from storage before uh, the page loads. And that way we can put the slider in the initial position uh, from last time when we set it. If the value has never been set before, maybe it's the first time you've used the extension, we'll set it to zero. Um, and then we can, of course, adjust the input to be at the right position. And once we fetched it from storage, we can call set value again, and that will then set our page up. We're going to call the init function, and just in case there's an error, grab it and log it. Next up, we'll need to do our content script. So I'm going to go to that file. Um, for this, we actually need to uh, listen for changes to that storage object, and we can react to those to update the effect on the page. We're going to affect the page by injecting a style tag into it. So I've created a style tag, and we're just going to append that right into the body. Um, and when our storage changes, we can update the value of that style tag. So we're listening for the browser storage on changed event. Uh, it looks a little different in extensions than the add event listener model, but we can listen to what changes have been made to storage and what area they've been in. We're only using local storage, so we're going to look for local changes, and we're going to look for the value value, um, and we look for that key in the object. And if the value has been changed in local storage, we're going to call an update function. Uh, just like before, we're going to define that update function to take our new value, um, and we're going to use the styles inner text attribute to set some CSS on the page. So we've got an HTML tag, and we're going to set it with a sepia using our value, the percent, and we're going to make it important because we want to override what's on the page. Normally, you don't do this, but for an extension, we're trying to override the content on the page. Okay, um, to get started, when our content script is loaded, we can fetch the value from our local storage. And once we have it, we can take the result and pass it to that update function. Um, and then we can actually make the extension load and make everything happen when we navigate to a new page. So let's see what that looks like. We're going to use the WebEx CLI and the run command to see our uh, extension live in Firefox. Uh, we're going to navigate to a site, and you can see that little palette icon. And as we drag our slider, the sepia effect uh, is uh, changed, and that's it. It's a really simple extension. Um, hopefully, it shows you the power of extension APIs, um, and you can see how easy it is to get started and how fun it is to take control of your browser. So I hope you uh, build some cool stuff. And thanks for watching.